So turn your dunya into din. I think I've said this little incident that happened with me. It's a bit of a funny incident. I think you've heard it before. I'll say it again for those who didn't know. So one day I was here in the masjid, back in the days when I was about 20, 21, 22, and I used to import vehicles from overseas to bring them here and sell them. And I wanted to get married, so my intention was Ifa. Ifa in Arabic means to uh, guard myself and get married. The intention was with, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because I like to get married to keep me away from haram. To do that, I need to be independent. To do that, I need to have an income. To do that, I need to be able to support a family. Isn't that right? Yes or no? Tayyip. I was at uni that time. By the time I finish uni, it's going to be a long time. So I had to hustle, do some side hustling. And that is to buy and sell, which is good. But look at the intention. So long as it was a halal job, I looked at all the income and everything, and my business deals were good. I asked uh, my colleagues, I had studied uh, Sharia at Lebanon, and looked at it and said, okay, this, this good business dealing is halal. So one day I came to the masjid here, I was praying uh, Dhuhr, and I parked one of the cars outside, it had some shiny wheels, shiny rims. I had put it for sale. As I'm walking out, I see a young brother who understands, who had misunderstood the meaning of deen and dunya and could not separate the two. He thought it's either that or it's that, you can't have both. <laughs> May Allah reward him, he's changed and subhanAllah we became very good friends and as I'm walking out, I'm walking towards my car, I hear him from the back. He goes like this, dunya dunya, <laughs> sarcastically telling me you're following the dunya, that's all you're doing buddy. I feel sorry for you. That was the tone. And I was caught on you know, by surprise. So I turned to him and I thought that I can get out of it by expl rationally explaining to him, Wallahi akhi, I put it to sell it. And I was going to explain more, but he didn't let me finish. I said, Wallahi akhi, I put it to sell it. He goes, More dunya. <laughs> you ain't going to say, Dunya has entered your heart. I just said, Khalas, I'm doomed if I go by what he says. The point is, brothers and sisters, we, we need to learn how to put the knowledge of the Qur'an and Sunnah into context. What does it mean that I live my life according to the deen? And I don't have to separate my deen and dunya. If I separate the deen and dunya, guess what's going to happen? Majority of people who follow Islam will lose out. Because everybody's going to think, the only way to enter paradise is by coming to the mosque. The only way to go to paradise is by memorizing the Qur'an. The only way to go to paradise is you've got to learn Arabic. The only way to go to paradise is you've got to learn all the du'as, all the dhikr. You have to go to hajj, you have to give sadaqah, that's it. You know what amazes me is that sometimes when we do a charity event and all the Muslims come along, can you imagine me on the khutbah on Jumu'ah here? You've come to me on Jumu'ah. And in my khutbah, I say to you, brothers and sisters, stay away from dunya. Dunya is going to kill you. Dunya is going to ruin your heart. Don't make much money. Just live according to the means. Look at the sahabas. Look at the companions. Look at that. Now the dunya is not out of your heart. You've got to live according to your means. One week later, I've got a charity event. Come brothers, we've got a charity event. We're going to help the orphans. We're going to build the masjids. You come along. How much are you going to donate? Each one's going to donate 20 cents, 50 cents. And you go, look at these brothers. They're not generous. Dunya, brothers, the dunya shouldn't stay in your heart. I just told you, don't go after the dunya. And now I want your money to build a mosque and look after the orphans. How does that work? Of course, the not the sheikhs don't do that. But some people misunderstand this. A mu'min, a believer, should have resources. But how do you apply those resources? Strength, resources is power. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did say, المؤمن القوي خير من المؤمن الضعيف وفي كل خير. A, a capable and strong believer is more beneficial than an incapable and weaker believer, yet both of them have goodness in them. The strong believer has two meanings. They're the ones who are strong in their faith, meaning God comes first for them. 
And it means they have resources to help the community and the society and themselves. They're not dependent on the welfare system. They're not dependent on the community. They're not dependent on people looking after them. They look after others. They are more beneficial. As for the weak believer, the weak believer can be a little bit weaker in his iman or her iman. That's a given. They can be weak. But what, and Allah knows best, what the real meaning here is, according to some of the scholars, is that their resources are weaker. They're not able to help other people much. And that is the closer meaning. And both of them are correct meanings anyway. So a believer who can benefit. And adding to this is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, uh, The best of people, or the most beneficial of people, are the ones who can benefit other people. What use? Yani, a, a high value man is somebody who can also be useful. Or a high value woman can be a num number one for me is being useful what's the point of you being useless you can't stay in a marriage you can't stay in a relationship you can't hold a job nobody wants to hire you you can't even open your own business the customers say it's useless can't even help yourself your mother has to do your bed someone has to still tie your shoelace for example i'm just being a bit extreme here Always running around for others to give you and feed you. Subhanallah. That is not what a believer should be.